All right, so as promised, library hall and then the reading recommendations. Which I, I always call these reading rec recommendations plus more. I just feel weird about saying library hall. I don't know why. Not that, like, the only that, don't let, that you guys don't already know that, because that's what you guys usually comment on. I'm just gonna... See, this is what they do. Some of them, they put it so tight, you have to rip it open, which is what I do. Like, fuck it. I'm not gonna reuse this bag. Now, these three... So, I thought it would be Ghost Rider and, and Lucifer. I almost said Lazarus. And Lucifer. It was neither of those. And in fact, the three that it were, that that was the interlibrary ones, I was completely surprised with. I was like, those ones? Like, that quickly? Wow. The, for the first, like, I want to say month or so, I'm always going to be super surprised about the books that come in. Oh, wow, it's seven issues here. So I wonder if it was the seven-issue miniseries. But this one, they almost didn't have. It was so hard for the librarian to find. Because I'm, I'm sure no one's taking it out. It's just not a book any, anybody knows about. In fact, the only the only reason why I know about it is because a long ass time ago, yeah, I've done it recently. The long ass time ago, I had gotten a grab bag of books. I could have just wanted to got a spider Gwen, Gwen, a spider Gwen one too, but it was like 2000. I want to say 2017 or 15 maybe. It was a long long, long time ago, and I got in Illuminati, the first issue of that. Uh, and this was the 2015 series, not the um, Brian Michael Bendis one. No. This one's actually written by Joshua Williamson. This is... I, I like... Uh, Jesus Christ. I really liked the first issue. Um, it's definitely a series I'm, I'm gonna... I want to check out. But yeah, I wonder if that one was why. It's because, like, why? It's because, like, no one... Well, no one heard of one. I always think that these are smaller than the other ones. Because the, one of them was. Uh, All New X-Men Volume... I'm still 20 bucks. Volume 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know. Because they cover it up. So, it's one down. If that helps. All New X-Men, Volume whatever, one down. I want to say Volume 5. Whichever one comes out, whichever one comes after the one I just had. Uh, it starts with Issue 25. Which that's right too, because it's, um... 25? Because Phoenix... Yeah, Phoenix is 20, 22, 23. That's right. I mean, 22, 24. Uh, that, that Phoenix, not, not Phoenix, well, yeah, it is Phoenix, but the, uh, Trial of Jean Grey, uh, Jean, Jean Grey, which I gotta finish. It came, this came out so quickly, that even though I was like, yeah, I've gotta finish it, gotta read it every day, I still wouldn't have, I would just be finishing it tomorrow, or today, actually, if I hadn't figured anything off, which I, kind of would have been awesome, but, kind of been awesome, kind of would have been nice to do that, but, I might try and, and I'm not, not in a huge rush to finish this, because this is only six issues, and it's only take me five days to read, so... And this last one, um, I swear, I, I've seen it before. I just, like, it was the series I've always wanted to read, but didn't get the best reviews on Goodreads. And I decided to hell with it. I'm gonna get it. And it says, Dying is Easy. This is a Joe Hill book. So that's, so that's um, Stephen King's son. Um, it was just kind of a, no, it didn't do too well. Everyone, no one liked it. No, not no one liked it. Everyone just thought it was, like, okay. And I was like, you know what? I'll settle with that. I'll see what, how it is. There's no, like, downside. The rest of these are just from the library themselves. And I, I always forget. I gotta do reading recommendations after. I almost forget, in this case. Just a movie, Wild Rose. Um, probably won't talk about it. I don't need to talk about the movies. I think I've actually forgotten to in the past. Um, this is a reread because I kind of want to get back into this series. And I kind of forgot all of what happened. Copperhead! That was the one! Mm. Manhattan Projects 1 and 2. Because I, I, this, this afternoon, because I had plenty of time to think about it, I was like, what was that book that I wanted to get that I was pissed off I didn't get last time? I should just start looking at it. I really got to do this in focus thing, not be like, okay, so this is the book. I'm not going to be in focus. I really got to stay in focus. But yeah, I, I was like, I had all, all afternoon to think about the book. I was like, Complete blank. I, I really should have just gone back to the video and seen, and read it, <laughs> read it, watched it. And then Cable and Deadpool Volume Four. I mean, it's not like I don't already have eighty thousand ones to read, anyways. And I know I'm not gonna have enough. And now with that, even though I'll probably read this one right after, that I won't finish Manhattan Projects Two by next week. But yeah, that was the one. 
If I had time, I would have checked. I, I, sh I really should have said I'm 20, like, five minutes. So it was kind of like an in and out thing. in and out burger. Hey, there was a movie I didn't get either. That I wanted to get, kind of, sort of. So, you win some, you lose some. It wasn't really a big deal. I mean, it's not a big deal to me. It's just kind of like, now I remember what it was. Okay, so let's do the movies. Alright, so, so the re reading recommendations. First one's a movie. Uh, Harold and Kumar, uh, Guantanamo Bay. I thought it was kind of disappointing. I honestly, like, it was, it's one of those sequels that suffers from a huge case of sequelitis. It's not as funny as the first, not as fresh as the first. The first one, I kid you not, was probably the funniest movie I have seen in ages. And the second one was more funnier than, uh, it's more funny than a lot of other people, a lot of other critics are saying. Just not as fresh as the original. Kind of slow. Like, it kind of feel like it could have been, like, it was, um hour 47 and the first one was hour and a half i think a little bit less than that this one could have been an hour and a half they easily could have cut 17 minutes in this movie and i just thought like it was just eh. i won't be watching the third one third and final one maybe maybe not maybe, maybe i will maybe i won't i don't know not right away at least witcher i also found to be kind of disappointing but i didn't really have any like um friggin expectations. And it's one of those ones I'm glad that I gave back to the library. And the, back to the library. I'm glad that I gave back to Newberry, because I had, I had gotten if you knew if you knew that story, I had bought it. Found out it was on Interloan. It's the same exact book. Not Volume 1. I got the Omnibus and Volume 1. Again, Volume 1 and the Omnibus would be like twice of these, or actually four of these, actually. It's a pretty big book. And I was glad I didn't get it at, um, I didn't keep it. Sex Criminals, one of the most depressing endings ever. I mean, again, it's only two ways it could have gone, but, like, it was just kind of like it ended, like, spoilers, they're all broken up, and she's moving out, and they're, like, there's, like, no hope, and, 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 yeah, there is kind of hope, because he tries to go, he goes after these people that they just met that are gonna go after the big bad, um, kegel face person, but it was just kind of like, wow, down in the dumps, and they should have the, um, big hard sex criminals at hardcover versions. I'm sorry, my dog's running around all over the place. If, if, if someone calls for me, I'm going to scream, because I'm doing so good. It's always when I'm doing good, too. Like, I'm like, yep, this is the book, and I, I say everything I want to say about it. I say everything. Like, nothing. I, there's nothing I forget to say, because usually, usually there's a couple things I forget to say. Um, so, yeah, Sex Criminals, they, they hopefully, crossing my fingers, they have the next the hardcover version. Uh, Ghost Rider, surprisingly good. Like, I thought, it, I thought it'd be kind of bad, and it'd be kind of too woke and, like, you know, all new, all different, like, everything that's wrong with it, all new, all different Marvel. And I'm sure more people will find more criticisms in it, and I will notice those and be like, oh, yeah, now I kind of like it a little bit less now. Um, but just, like, they did everything that I thought they would. I mean, they didn't do everything I thought they would. Like, they, that would make this the book bad. The only thing is that the really bad guy is white, and it's kind of one of those things. But, like, and, and they do, they kind of just be woke, like, oh, well, white men are bad, you know, like how with Ms. Marvel does. Um, and, but that never really pissed me off in Ms. Marvel, because I never noticed it until I, until I was, until it was pointed out to me, and I was like, oh, now I see it. Um, so it wasn't like they were doing it for a reason. Of course, it was, it was, it was subtle for me, I guess you would say, even though all I had to do was look at the color. Um, but this one, like, some of the bad guys are the same ethnicity, or at least seem to be the same ethnicity as the main character, which that's, like, in real life, you know? There are gonna be bad guys that are same ethnicity as you, same brothers, you know? Like, my brother, you know, that, that kind of thing. It's not always gonna be the, dirt, the damn white man, or dirty white man, or how you say that. Um, the next one was Cable and Deadpool. I mean, I got volume four. Now, why do I feel? Did I turn in both? Yes, yes, I did. It was two and three. That's why. So, both were just as... Did I? Yeah, I did. Because I just finished volume three. No, I did not. I did not. I did not finish volume three. That's right, too. So, this one and um, X-Men. I can't read right away. But that's right, too. It was just volume two that I finished. And I liked volume two. But... Okay, so the one thing that I was talking to you, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm distracted right now. Um, so, the biggest thing I hate about this book is that, I hate about the first one, was that there was a lot of exposition, um, exposition, exposition dumps. And it took two pages 
two to four pages, but only sh should only take in like one or half a page to one page at the most. And they would take like double that, if that, at the least. And then they would have this interview scene. I, I think I've mentioned this the first time I read it, but they did, they did, they did, they did bleh, sorry. I'm, I, I do that thing all the time where I'm like thinking like the words, I'm still on other words, you know, I'm saying like, oh, they do interviews, I'm still on that, so I say it again, almost. But they did, they did these interview scenes where they're just like interviewing, and that's just so lazy because it takes up it takes up two pages, and there's no like it's not like there's pictures or anything, so it's like li it's like written dialogue that if you had put it in a comic book would take five to six pages, and it's all in two pages, and it's made it so monotonous. But they stopped that once. Um, spoilers: Cable dies. I mean, not dies. It's like he gets lobotomized, but he's back normal. It was really weird. If they took that out, I wouldn't have noticed. They make some passing references to it, but I would have. Well, okay, fine. It's kind of boring. It's kind of no. A uh, preacher, so damn good. There are certain things in this book that I was dreading, because there's this, there's this character that's in peril. Well, the black lady that's in peril, and I'm like, oh my god. Are they going to have the characters, like, rape her? They don't. I'm so glad they didn't need to go that dark with it. And then she just shoots them. She's such, like a badass female lead that's awesome. Well, not lead, because it's a, it's a secondary character. But she, like, shoots them all. And she, like, and you find out later. And I think she shot them all. She shot one, and she arrests the other. That's right, too. Shoots one, arrests the other. And with Quinn Cannon, I feel like Garth, Garth Ennis knew that this was not a very, um fun villain, he was kind of a boring villain, and you just kind of want to see him get his ass kicked, and he kind of burns him alive at the end. It was kind of, like, super quick. And then there was a scene where, um, this crazy Nazi lady, um, arrests, not arrests, but, like, handcuffs the preacher guy, uh, Jesse Custer, and she puts him in his room and, like, locks him up, and they literally don't do anything with it. Like, he gets out of it in, like, under five minutes. Or five pages, and it's like, thank you. They didn't because I thought it was gonna have a whole entire issue about that, about her, him being tied up and to try and rape him and be like so like uncomfortable. But they didn't. Garth Ennis, like this is his seminal series. The Boys is too kind. It's just too mean and too slow, and it doesn't go anywhere for the first fourteen issues. Fourteen issues, and it goes nowhere. You actually want mean things to happen, so something fucking happens. But the preacher, the first five issues, something's happening, and you're already on on board. And yeah, it has its slower issues. Like there was one issue that did not need to be in there; it was a total fill in fill in issue. But Garth Ennis deserves to have five fill in issues in a row for how well he's done on preacher. It is my highest recommendation thus far for the library books I have read, or uh, among that you know top ten. It's definitely in the top ten, top five, definitely. Maybe even, definitely top three. Like, probably th third, second, or even first. It's a series that I want to buy myself, even though I know all, so hope that all six are available at my, well, in ink your loans. And that's how damn good it is. It's, I don't mind wasting, wasting my... So Magneto, Magneto I thought was good, you know, just as good as the, the first and second one. Third one's just great. I um, cannot wait to finish that series and see how that, see the climax of that, because that's got to be interesting. It's definitely, it's, again, one of those series you wouldn't think would be as good as it is because it's Magneto. It's on X-Men books, so you wouldn't think they need to try as hard, because it's, it's Magneto, you know? But they definitely take advantage of that character. They go, they delve deep into his past. They don't change too much of his past to make it, ret to make retcons into things that people liked about the character. It's one of those books that it, t it takes advantage of his character and it's a love letter to his, you know, to the creators. Hell, maybe even Chris Claremont, because I, I think he was the one that gave him Holocaust backstory. Because you gotta remember, Chris Claremont gave us everything about X Men that we love. Stan Lee just created the characters. Chris Claremont evolved the characters and made new ones. Although Len Wein, I think, was his technically the one that made them. Yeah, he did. It's Len Wein and the other guy. Uh, friggin. He did Batman. Neil Adams, I think? I don't know. Um, I, you know, okay, Nameless. So, this is funny. This finally solidified exactly what I like about Grant Morrison and what I don't like about Grant Morrison. 
What I like about Grant Morrison is that he, yes, he does do confusing shit, but it's at least, you can at least sort of follow on, follow along what's going on. At least to a point where you're interested. You want to see, like, oh my god, this is crazy. What the hell is happening? I kind of, even though, even though they're not going to unravel the mystery, per se, I still want to be in this world. This is a crazy world. This is awesome. Like, with Doom Patrol. That's, that show is so damn good, and I'm sure it takes inspiration from his, on to the omnibus, you know, the omnibus, from Grant Morrison's run. I thankfully got an omnibus of. And, um... But it also had a couple of things I don't like about Grant Morrison. But not enough to where I wanted to fully stop reading. And that's when he either takes too much... T like, talks too much about the confusing shit. And you don't know what he's talking about, so you don't care. That's what I don't like about Grant Morrison. Is when he tries to explain things. That you already don't know what the hell, is, what the hell he's talking about. So it becomes uninteresting, and it's just jargon, crap, exposition, dump shit. Not, not even like, I know what's going on, but I don't know what's going on. Why are you trying to explain? It's like he's trying to explain it to himself, almost. It's weird. But I, I did definitely enjoy it a lot more than I did the first two times I tried to read it. And I do, I, I do recommend it. And of course, highly recommend it if you love Grant Morrison, but you've probably already read it before. Uh, Deadpool, the Volume 7 Axis. I wasn't as confused as I was with um, this one. But with Volume 6 and Volume 7, the thing that I hated the most was that they were both tie-ins to Marvel events. That's the only thing I hated, hated about the about Volume 6, Original Sin, the one where he finally finds Ellie and, you know, meets Ellie, his daughter. Spoiler, sorry, but, you know. Dark point with all these, but I mean, I'm sure all you guys know. I hope. Um, and volume seven is just a tie into the Axis event, the Avengers vs. X Men event. Axis, I think it was a sequel to Avengers vs. X Men, which had only come out a year prior, I think, or two years prior. I don't know, but um, and they said that it was very it was a, it was a bit of like thing, there's a couple of things that was like, who is this character? Why is she suddenly introduced? And it's probably because he's been introduced in Axis. So there was a couple characters in there, I was like, who the hell are they? Um, but other than that, I, I liked it. You know, it wasn't too bad. The only one I didn't like was the last issue that was just a, um, environmental, uh, what do you call it? Lecture? It was just an environment lecture. Like, okay, cool. And was, the Deadpool jokes are pretty funny, but it was just, it was not enough to make me like that issue. Two, I, I really... Really gotta admit, I really gotta check to see if they have the next volume in this. Because I'm pissed off they don't have the next volume in solicitations. Because Chew is so damn good. I'm so glad I gave it a second chance. And then finally, Sleepless. So I, I, I messed up. It wasn't by Brian K. Vaughn. It was by Sarah Vaughn. And no, I didn't finish it in the amount of time from Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday. I just hated it. It was terrible. It was so bad. Like, I, I wish I had the book, because it was actually something I'm going to mention. You couldn't tell the... I couldn't tell the difference between the guy and the girl. I had to have it told to me. And I was like, wow. If I can't tell if the guy character is a guy character, then you're already trying to make it one... Into, already trying to make it into one of those comics. And, I, and it wasn't like that. It's not why I hated it, because it, when they, went, they didn't like delve deep into that kind of shit. It's boring, it's uninteresting. I didn't care about the characters, didn't care about the world, didn't care about the anything. Didn't care to know what was happening next. I was like, nope, done after issue one. It's stupid. And had it been by Brian K. Vaughn, I would have said, what the hell happened to you? But it was done by Sarah Vaughn, which is his daughter, his wife, his girlfriend, his mother, his, um, his alter ego that makes terrible books, maybe that. I mean, it's that. It's just it's a terrible alter ego that makes terrible ass books. Or just one, one terrible ass book. Because that's like, cause you gotta, you gotta, I gotta admit that there are certain, like, books by certain authors I don't like. Like, Jason Aaron, apparently his Hulk sucks, so. I hope it's like that, because I hope Sarah Vaughn writes be is a better writer than I give her credit for, I don't know. Just the worst version of Saga, basically. Which is written by Frank K. Vaughn. That's why I mentioned that. 19 minutes. 
Um, and it was a lot, it was a lot like so I was Saga too. It was a lot like um, Fables too. I don't like Fables, so maybe it was a little bit of that. Like, I, I read like it was like literally the first page. Like when it said chapter one, I opened I opened up to Sleepless. It's not Cable and Temple, obviously. And I was like, oh, it's a Fables knockoff, isn't it? And it was kind of less so than I thought it would be. But a lot of similarities between that and Fables. R really just a time period. Everything else was different. At least Fables, I liked the first few pages, the first few pages, the first few issues, the first few volumes of. And after the, and after issue 12, it was like, I'm done. It's not that great. That's it.